all right welcome to my channel everybody welcome back in this series of videos where we're going to build a travel application um, in power apps now in our last video we talked about tra uh, a sharepoint list we created this travel request sharepoint list which will be the container for the data of our application and i talked about the metadata metadata the different columns now one of the things we're going to be discussing in this video is security through item level permissions. Um, security is an Im critical and important aspect of any app development, not just in power apps, but in any application. You must make sure that those who have access to an application are supposed to have access to the application. You know, those who have access or permissions to certain data that they're supposed to have that permissions. So we're going to be discussing that, how we're going to do that in SharePoint list and how that carries over into power apps, because whatever permissions or access the user has in, in a SharePoint list or in SharePoint, it also carries over into power apps. So with that said, in our video today, we're going to be creating a travel request approval. That's going to be your SharePoint list. And then we're going to be setting up permissions for three different groups. So if you remember from our last video, we talked about the three stage approval. So it's going to be the team lead, the manager and the senior manager. So we're going to create SharePoint groups for those three levels. And then we're going to create an item level permission. So I'll show you how to do that. Now let's go over here to this cog wheel up here and let's go to site permissions and we're going to click on the advanced permission settings. Now, when you initially create a SharePoint site, whatever name you give that SharePoint site is going to create three groups by default. So, um, because I named my SharePoint site, a YouTube demo, it created a YouTube demo site members, YouTube demo site owners, YouTube demo site visitors. Um, and these groups will be, will have access to a whole site collection. And a site collection is just a, a collection of sites. We're more, you know, this is probably a more advanced topic, but you know, Microsoft kind of recommends a flat structure, but I'm not going to go into that. We can talk about that in another video. If you're interested in taking my SharePoint class, just leave, leave it in the comment and I'll try to, um, create that again. But anyway, here in this permissions area is where we can create groups. Now here's the importance of groups. The reason why you want to create groups, imagine you're in an organization where they have a thousand users and you have quite a bit of sites and quite a bit of SharePoint lists and libraries. Now, the worst thing you want to do is give individual, give these users individual access to certain entities. So let's say you gave a, you know, to this particular site, you gave each user direct access to it. They're kind of had heart to manage, you know, um, because if you needed to, re you know, let's say a user left, if you need to remove that user, you'd have to go looking for that user in the site or whatever, whatever else they have access to in your SharePoint site and then remove them individually. The best thing to do is to add them in a group. Um, it's they're much, it's when you, when you create a group and you add users into that group, they're much easier to maintain. So let's create our three groups. So let's say team lead. And another reason why you want to create a group is because you know, let's say your team lead, your current team lead leads, leaves, um, and another one comes since we're using that, since we're using that group for access permissions, um, all you have to do is just take the, you know, remove the old one and, and add the new user in there. And you know, no, you know, nothing will break. It also have access and let's give this team lead group. We're going to give a uh, contribute permissions. So, these are the different permission levels, full control, design, edit. I always use contribute. So click create. So that's the first one. I'm going to pause the video and create the other two, which is manager and senior manager. 
All right, so here are the three groups I've created, manager, senior manager, team lead. Now, what you, what I would what you would do is within each group you would come in here and you would add whoever the manager is. Um, now in my site I don't have too many, it's just myself so I can't really demonstrate that part but I hope that makes sense. You come in here and add whoever the manager is, whoever the senior manager is, and whoever the team lead is. You add them into the respective groups. Now let's go and create our SharePoint list. Remember you come up here to the settings, go to site contents, Site contents is where your libraries and your lists are. So we're going to come over here, click new at the top, list, blank list. And we're going to call this travel request, um, let's see, approver. Approval, okay. And click create. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create three items in here and let's add another column and let's call it roll. You don't have to have this. I'm just creating this so you can see. So let's call it roll. Um, so we're going to say team lead. manager and then let's say senior senior manager so by default everyone has access to this list right now so I come over here to the list settings and I go to list settings and I do permissions for this list you see everybody has access to this list everybody that has access to the site has access to the list that's kind of how it works it, it inherits the parent's permission as you can see this list inherits permission from this parent i can stop inheritance but i'm not going to do that what i want to do is i want item level permissions so that permissions choke goes down from the parent to the list and to each item so if i come here and I do manage access, you see also that those same users and groups that had access to the site and also to the SharePoint list also have access to this item. So we can stop sharing, and this is called item level permissions where you can control the permissions of each item in the list. So let's stop sharing. So as you can see, once I stopped sharing, um, it removed, let me make sure, it removed all the other users except the site owner because the site owner has full control. So as you can see, this list item has unique permissions. So let me close that out, let me go back. And so what I wanna do though, now I wanna give access to this team lead to the team lead group I created. So I'm going to go here, uh, grant permissions, and I'm going to say team, team lead. Do contribute. I don't need, to, don't need to send an email, share. Let me refresh it to make sure. Okay, so now the team lead and the full control, the owners of the group, this is usually the person that manages the site, they have access to the list as well. So let me go back and now I'm going to do the same thing for the other two. So let me come back here and just to make sure. And as you can see now, you have site owner and I can't change this, but as you can see, the team lead has access to this. So anybody that's in the team lead group, when they come to this site, all they're going to see is just this. Once I, you know, add the permissions to these, so let me do the same thing here. Let me come here, manage access. 
stop sharing, stop sharing, and then I come here, advanced settings, and then I'm just going to grant permissions. And I think this is the manager. Let me make sure. Just want to make sure that's what I clicked on. Oh yeah, manager. Okay, so manager. And I'm going to give the manager contribute permission level. So share. All right. And I'm going to pause the video and do the same. Okay, we're back. So I've done the same thing for all of them now. So what happens is, as I was explaining before, in our SharePoint group, whoever is in the team lead SharePoint group or the manager SharePoint group or the senior manager SharePoint group, when they come to this list, all they're going to see is what they have access to. So if I was in the SharePoint team lead group, when I come to this list, all I would see is the team lead. I wouldn't see manager or senior manager. So we're going to use this in our power apps. We're going to be able to test and see or to check and see if the current user in our power apps, which group that they belong to. And depending on the group that they belong to team lead manager, senior manager, they can be able to do certain things or see certain things. That's how we kind of control the security. Um, so I hope that made sense in our next video. We're going to finally get into power apps and I'm going to show you how we integrate this with our power apps, as I mentioned. So hope that made sense. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for notifications on future videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, drop them in the comments below. See you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.